Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, and uh, welcome to week three, lecture five of uh, Dynamic Atomic Force Microscopy Methods. Uh, this past week, we've been looking at uh, different uh, ways of uh, using VEDA to understand uh, dynamic atomic force microscopy uh, approach curves and scanning tools. Uh, in particular, in the last lecture, we were talking about um, scanning instabilities and how you can use VEDA to uh, A, actually figure out uh, what is the underlying reason for the instability and B, explore how to mitigate the instability by playing around with the operating parameters. Um, and uh, what we're going to focus on today is uh, on phase contrast. Um, the last week we talked about the theory of phase contrast uh, in tapping mode atomic force microscopy. And we talked up about the fact that the phase lag um, has an interesting um, uh, uh, sort of effect from ETS and VTS, the energy dissipation in the varial. Um, in particular, uh, some of the two main conclusions we had when we did tapping mode um, phase contrast imaging was that uh, whenever the phase lag is more than 90 degrees, uh, we're in the attractive regime of operation. Whenever the phase lag is less than 90 degrees, you're in the repulsive regime. And uh, when you're observing phase contrast, if you've got uh, an image taken with uh, uh, repulsive regime all over the sample, which means the phase lag is um, less than 90 degrees all over the sample, uh, in that situation, wherever you see brighter phase lag uh, corresponds to larger dissipation and less varial. On the other hand, if you've taken the image entirely in the attractive regime, uh, where the phase at all points in the sample is actually, phase lag is actually greater than 90 degrees, there uh, the uh, darker parts of phase lag correspond to greater dissipation and lesser vario. Uh, we also talked about the fact uh, uh, in the last, uh, um, in the last uh, week that you could have situations where you choose a set point where over part of the sample you're in the attractive and part in, part in the repulsive. In those cases, you would get an image where the phase lag is sometimes greater than 90 degrees in some parts of the sample, less than 90 degrees in other, other parts of the sample, that tell you that it's very hard to compare what's happening in terms of energy dissipation because one corresponds to attractive, another corresponds to repulsive. So it's easiest to make inferences about energy dissipation when the entire image is taken in the attractive regime or the entire image is taken in the repulsive regime. When you get uh, conditions where part of the sample is attractive regime, part and repulsive, it becomes very hard to draw any conclusions. So uh, those were the key conclusions in theory, and what we're going to do today is discuss three um, simulations which are like computers, computer experiments, if you will, that demonstrate some of these key issues uh, that we've talked about. So the first problem is going to be uh, one based on the AM uh, scanning tool, amplitude modulated scanning tool, basic tool uh, in VEDA. And uh, what we have is a problem where we would like to investigate uh, a flat substrate where there's a feature with no height, zero height. Uh, the only difference uh, between the feature and the, and the substrate is that uh, uh, the Young's modulus of the feature is different. Other than that, uh, both the sample and the feature, or the feature and the substrate, um, have uh, this, the DMT interaction mo model, um, and um, they do not have any dissipation. Again, the details of all the simulation parameters and conditions uh, for this example are given in, the t in, the, in a table in the appendix. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is, in this first problem, we're going to study repulsive regime imaging, and we're going to choose a set point which leads to repulsive regime uh, uh, imaging, and we're going to look at phase contrast, all right? Again, there's no dissipation in the sample on any, on any part of the sample, neither on the feature nor on the substrate. So when you follow uh, the, uh, the same procedure that we've done before, use the AM uh, scanning tool, using all the parameters that have been given uh, for this problem uh, in the appendix, this is the measured topography one gets. Uh, the red shows the intended topography, which is absolutely flat, and the blue shows the actual measured topography, which is the amount the Z motion has to change in order to keep the amplitude constant. Uh, 
Uh, what's interesting about it is that even though the sample was originally flat, the middle part of the feature is, and the feature was about 10 times softer uh, than the substrate, the feature appears depressed. So this does tell us uh, one very interesting thing that, um, uh, you know, when we measure topography in tapping mode AFM, in fact in dynamic AFM in general, the topography is in fact um, influenced by the local properties of the sample. If you have a very soft uh, part of the sample, the topography appears a little uh, uh, pressed down because of the tip sample interaction forces when you're in the repulsive regime. When one plots the phase lag uh, as a function of uh, scan, uh, the scan length along the scan, uh, one sees that the phase lag is consistently below 90 degrees over both the substrate and the feature and then back uh, on the substrate again. Uh, there are little uh, hiccups that happen when there's a transition from uh, substrate to feature and then feature to substrate again. Uh, that is expected. We have talked about how uh, that's where you have transients. The controller is trying to move to adjust and get the amplitude uh, as quickly as possible back to its uh, intended set point ratio. So when you look at the sample, other than these hiccups that happen at the edges of, uh, you know, the feature, uh, the phase lag is consistently under 90 degrees. So we can claim that uh, over the entire image, uh, we are imaging in the repulsive regime. Now, uh, the second thing to notice is that um, there is in fact no phase lag between the feature and the substrate. In spite of the fact that the Young's modulus of the feature is actually 10 times smaller than the Young's modulus of the substrate. Um, so this is an interesting uh, result as well, which proves uh, the theory that we talked about um, earlier last week in that if there's no, if there's no change in dissipation, then uh, the phase lag is simply going to be equal to the sine inverse of the set point ratio. And uh, the set point ratio is 70% for the simulation. So if you just do a calculation of what sine inverse of 0 0.7 is, turns out it gives you the phase angle is 44.27 degrees. And if you look at the phase that the simulation is giving you, that's exactly what it's giving you. So. Uh, the analytical theory is, is really good. It allows us to, um, uh, to predict what kind of things would happen, uh, while this numerical simulation here is a very computationally expensive simulation. It actually makes the point mass oscillator oscillate. It takes the tip sample interaction forces, does hundreds of thousands of cycles, has the controller moving up and down. So it's a true uh, computer simulation of the whole AFM system. Uh, that's what you're seeing here, but at the end of the day, uh, the result we're getting out of it, the phase lag, is effectively what the analytical solution tells us. Um, in problem two, what we're going to do is we take the same problem as before, but now we allow the feature to have some dissipation in it. So the feature is soft and it has some dissipation in it. The dissipation is modeled using Kelvin Voigt uh, viscoelasticity, uh, which is again uh, discussed uh, uh, in the appendix. Uh, but basically what it is a simple model for viscoelasticity as a tip indents there is a viscous dissipation and as the tip retracts uh, from the sample we don't really have uh, much of a dissipation. So uh, there is no um, there is no viscoelasticity involved in the attractive part of uh, 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 the tip sample interaction in this particular model. So when we go ahead and uh, with the imaging conditions shown in the appendix, do the simulation, again we find that when you plot the topography in blue, uh, instead of being flat as we expect it to be, the soft part, uh, which is the feature, appears depressed uh, by about a nanometer and a half or so compared to the substrate. Now when we plot the phase, uh, we find again that um, all of the phase is basically uh, below 90 degrees, which means both the substrate and the feature are actually in the repulsive regime of imaging, but we do find that the phase lag is now greater on the feature compared to the substrate, which suggests that there's gonna be more dissipation uh, on, the, uh, on the feature compared to the substrate. So this confirms again uh, the theory that we had talked about earlier, um, that in the repulsive regime, um, greater um, uh, phase lag corresponds to uh, more energy dissipation into the sample.
In problem three, uh, we're going to look at a, a somewhat uh, rare condition, uh, which is face contrast imaging in the attractive regime. Uh, face contrast imaging is usually done in the repulsive regime because, you know, that's where the tip sample is really contacting, the repulsive gradients involved, and uh, a lot of the uh, dissipative processes uh, are activated when the interaction forces are repulsive and there's larger forces between the tip and the sample. In the attractive regime, there are only um, uh, a small number of cases where, um, you know, people intentionally do uh, face contrast imaging. It's not that uh, one doesn't get uh, energy dissipation in the attractive regime of oscillation, you know. The tip can come very close to the sample and move back, and yet there are many processes that are, um, that lead to non-conservative effects. It's just that typically those effects, those, ener those energy dissipation terms are usually small, and there's usually not as much contrast. Uh, when you go over different parts of the sample, except under certain conditions, and we studied this um, in one of the examples uh, last week where uh, we were looking at uh, published data on water and surfaces, how you might be imaging the whole sample in the attractive regime, and uh, you know when you hit uh, layers of water, um, the uh, energy dissipation uh, would increase while you're in the attractive regime of imaging. So we're going to try and mimic that particular example here um, by coming up with a substrate that's nominally flat. Uh, there's a substrate and there's a feature, again, nominally flat on it. The difference between the substrate and the feature is going to be that the substrate is going to be a stiff uh, material like mica, for example, a very high GPA, uh, elastic modulus, and it'll have a DMT-like uh, interaction model, and there will not be any dissipation on the substrate. The feature, on the other hand, uh, is going to have uh, Hertzian contact mechanics. Uh, again, it's a stiff substrate, Hertzian contact mechanics, but we will now include a capillary interaction model. Uh, a capillary interaction model basically does this. Uh, so we have a Hertz contact, so the tip feels no forces uh, until it basically contacts the water layer. The water layer is supposed to be very, very thin, so we're not really modeling with too much of a thickness of the water layer. Uh, the tip comes in and pretty much when it contacts the sample, it feels a repulsive force, and then as the tip moves away, uh, in that little gap between the tip and the sample, water molecules have condensed. So when you move away, you're actually stretching a capillary neck, which then breaks at a certain key point. So the simulation requires for you to enter um, the energy lost in making and in making and breaking the capillary bond, and it's just, it's, it's shown in the uh, appendix. So that's the key difference in the model between the feature and the substrate. Uh, the Young's modulus is the same, but the feature has uh, no uh, Hamacher constants, no Van der Waals effects. It's purely Hertzian, but it has a uh, hysteretic uh, capillary interaction model uh, built into it. And we're going to image the sample uh, under conditions that lead us to attractive regime of operation uh, throughout the sample. And once you go through it, uh, the first thing I plot out here is uh, the uh, uh, the topography, measured topography, remember the intended topography was absolutely flat. We find that uh, over the water layer, uh, you know, the, uh, the topography appears a little uh, lower compared to uh, the substrate. When one looks at the phase, we see some very important results. Uh, the first is that the phase lag over the entire sample, over the feature, as well as over the substrate. Phase lag is greater than 90 degrees, which means we have successfully imaged the sample um, completely and entirely in the attractive regime. The microscope has been operated in the attractive regime for the entire scan. Um, on the other hand, one does notice that uh, uh, there is no dissipation in the, uh, in the, uh, on the substrate. Um, and you can actually relate the phase lag you're getting to the set point ratio uh, exactly uh, as far as the substrate is concerned. However, when you come onto the feature, we find that the phase lag is actually decreased. Uh, and uh, you can actually go to the menu and do a drop down of the menu and actually plot as well uh, the energy dissipation uh, during the scan. And that's shown in the appendix, and you'll find that there's greater energy dissipation happening uh, on the uh, feature, and on the substrate, there's no energy dissipation. But the phase, on the other hand, shows an interesting uh, behavior. The phase lag now over the water layer is less 
even though the energy dissipation is greater. And this completely confirms what we had talked about before, that when you're in the attractive regime, uh, darker phase lag means greater dissipation. It's completely opposite to what happens in the repulsive regime. Um, so uh, this, this kind of explains this really interesting result that can happen when you image in the attractive regime. Now, when you try this uh, simulation at home uh, or in class, uh, I encourage you to play around with initial amplitudes uh, and set point ratios here. You will quickly find that for this particular example, uh, you can change things slightly and you'll be in a situation where uh, it's actually uh, tapping in the repulsive regime on the substrate and goes into the attractive regime uh, over the feature. Uh, and you can get into situations where you're in the repulsive regime on the substrate, get on the, uh, uh, get on the feature in the attractive regime, get off the feature, and you don't go back to the repulsive regime. So there's a lot of instabilities that can happen uh, in this particular scan. I, I encourage you to play around with, uh, with uh, initial free amplitudes, uh, set point amplitudes, uh, to, to, to really observe the fact that trying to image this kind of a sample in, entirely uh, in the attractive regime uh, will be not a very easy task. It can be done, but it requires, uh, you know, the optimal adjustment of operating parameters. So with that, I'd like to uh, uh, close the uh, lecture for today. Uh, I hope you, you, you saw how VEDA is able to help uh, bring out uh, the different subtle cases of phase contrast and uh, confirm, in fact, how uh, the theoretical results from the analytical theory uh, do in fact provide a very good insight into what would happen uh, in an atomic force microscope. Thank you.